Tell us about the evolution of the Scoble show a little bit. I think it's just natural. If you do something 200 times, you're going to start looking to do it a little bit better or do it differently. Plus, I have an editor now, and I have a really creative editor, which I hadn't had before. But part of it's just my, my skill in terms of pulling stuff out of people is getting better because yeah. I've done it now 800, 700, 800 times, you know, 200 at, at PodTech and 600 at Microsoft. And uh, I'm getting interesting interviews, and the game is stepping up a little bit, I guess. People say that in terms of... Um you know, doing the work that we do, uh, what's the return investment, how are people happy about that who are sponsors or clients in that, you know, paid for situation. What are your thoughts in terms of what you're doing? Like, what you did with Microsoft, it was really corporate image, and it was getting the, the word out to the community, and that was awesome. Now you're really in a commercial media type business. Uh, how is that working, and how is the, what, how do you gauge success? Uh, well, one, I have a, a unique audience, right? My audience is very geeky and very uh, executive oriented. And if, you know, if you can get 800 executives in a room, you can ch charge people a lot of money to be on stage, to be in front of those people, because those people decide on a lot of stuff. For instance, executives at Google buy a lot of hard drives, right? You know, hundreds of thousands of hard drives, in fact. You know, so um, that's why Seagate sponsors my show because they know that people who buy lots of computer equipment are watching my show and interested in the content that I'm producing. How do the advertisers, you know, know that you're reaching the right people? It's sort of just a buzz, a kind of feeling, or how does that work? Well, a few ways. One, they, they can just see the kind of kinds of people who link to my show. So, like a, a famous Flash architect linking to my Adobe video well, should tell you a lot about the kind of quality my show has, right? Uh, but two, they can look at how many hits it got, right? How much traffic it got. And three, there's an anecdotal part of it, which is you go to a party and it's like, who do you watch on the internet? Oh, I watch Leo Laporte, or I watch Andy Plesser, I watch Scoble Show. And that tells my sponsor where to spend the money, right? If they stop, if people at parties stop say, saying my name and start saying, hey, you got to be on Andy's show, well, I bet you, you'll steal my sponsor from me pretty fast. Tell us sort of what sort of the um, keys to success or how the medium is evolving and, and how it's working and um, you know sort of a little bit of where things are and where they might go. And, and the other thing that I'm interested in is will it break out of the tech space? Yeah. Like like blogging exists in politics and uh, all kinds of areas. Well, video video is, is, is like not there yet. I mean, uh, or in terms of original video, I don't mean like scraping a YouTube thing, but... but well, I, well, in YouTube, terms of... I mean, John Edwards was doing, hired a videographer to follow his campaign around and build YouTube videos, right? Um, and they had Rocket Boom film when he announced for president, yeah, yeah. I know Obama and Hillary and uh, a, a lot of the rep Republicans, like Mitt Romney, are doing the same thing. Coming into um, uh, Christmas time, we're going to get a lot better idea about who's really using video well to communicate with audiences because. The audiences here are small and seemingly insignificant, but like, like, how did I break my story about Mike yeah. when I left Microsoft, right? I told 15 people, and one of them told you, and I didn't even know who you were back then, right? And you, you broke it on the internet, and then it started doubling in size and going out from there. And within three days, uh, Wagner Edstrom says I had 50 million media impressions off of those 15 conversations. If you have a penny today and you double it every day for a month, what happens? For the first 20 days, you end up with, a, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks, right? But then the doubling effect starts kicking in, and then it becomes huge numbers, right? By the end of the month, you end up with more than $5 million, right? Because the doubling effect looks like that, right? And that's what goes on on the internet space. I tell 15 people, they tell 15 people, and so on and so forth. Eventually, that doubling effect brings in wild audiences um, and can change, can change elections, certainly. How do companies uh, create a successful way to tell their story in video? Like, um, how, what are your thoughts about that? In other words, do they do it through a blogging thing? Do they do it by putting video on their homepage? Do they use it as sort of uh, indirect response to get it seated? Or 
like how because because it, it's really hard I think for a company to say oh I'm gonna have my CEO blog or an executive blog and sometimes that'll work but mostly not well, I think one way is to have guys like you and me come along and interview you right because we have the camera equipment we have the skills to at least ask some stupid questions and get you to talk a little bit and relax you a little bit you know and and get it out and get it produced and get it out on the internet we have a blog and we have an audience already waiting for us right where some CEO might not have an audience certainly a CEO of a smaller company won't have an audience like that but I, I would certainly start with a blog uh, I, 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 I would try to get that CEO still to, to blog but the first thing is to learn to read blogs learn to that this is a two-way mechanism even though right now we're totally one way right although we're having a conversation but the the video is going out on the internet we have no idea if anybody's listening to it and we're not doing it two-way the power of this media though is that I can interact with my audience and get them involved and certainly even if the video is one way like my shows usually are one way yeah. people underneath the video can ask questions and continue the conversation it, it starts a continuing conversation if you're not reading blogs though or, and uh, hanging out on the internet a at least you know an hour a day you're gonna be pretty clueless about what's going on you know if you if you haven't been on Facebook or Twitter you know or LinkedIn you're gonna be at a loss to, to communicate with people on the internet right it's like being a publicist and not reading the newspaper, you have to know what's going on.